how to test your partner to see if they're cheating. Buy a used water bottle from Goodwill that could theoretically belong to anyone. Pretend to discover it in their car. Here's your water bottle. Use this exact phrasing. This only works if they think you think it's theirs. If they have nothing to hide. That's not mine. I don't know whose that is. They'll admit they don't know whose it is because you've made them feel like you trust them. But if they are cheating. Thank you so much. They'll go along with you and pretend it's theirs. Who's this person in my story having lunch with me? It's nobody. Same thing with this person in my car. When my ex and I first broke up, I wanted to make them jealous. So I went to the thrift store and bought a bunch of items I could carefully position around the edges of my photo so it would look like someone was with me. I do it all the time and it works great. Here's how I got my partner to start taking out the garbage. I wrote a letter to them. I tore the paper so that it looked like I had ripped the letter up, but I made sure the first piece included enough to work as bait that would entice them to find the rest of it. I hit a second piece of this fake letter under the garbage bag and I ripped the bag before putting it back in. The goal was that they would take the bag out to search for the rest of the letter and all the garbage would spill out, forcing them to clean it up and take it out to the dumpster. Now, every time the garbage is full, I do this again. My partner thinks that I get home from work at 6.30. In reality, I get off much earlier than that. I park a few blocks away, change into a prison jumpsuit and a scary Halloween mask, and I scare my partner by looking in the window and running off. Then when I get home, I pretend I have no idea what they're talking about. Oh, don't start with this again. I do this because I started to notice my partner was taking me for granted, and I wanted them to be happy to see me when I got home. Here's a little trick I use to make my partner love me more. Every once in a while, I open up the top part of the toilet and disconnect the chain that connects the plunger to the flushing lever. This essentially prevents the toilet from flushing. Then I wait for my partner to use the bathroom and discover the toilet's broken. When they tell me about it, I go take a look at it and just undo what I did before. Because using the bathroom is our most basic need and when we're at our most vulnerable, my fixing the toilet makes my partner's primitive brain perceive me as incredibly valuable and trustworthy. I don't want my partner looking at other people who are more attractive than me at our various summer gatherings. So I got this bottle of bug spray, emptied it out, and replaced it with sugar and honey dissolved in warm water. I got this idea because we watched the movie The Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan, and it seemed like something I could get away with doing myself for my own reasons. The goal is that my partner is so overwhelmingly distracted by bug bites that they don't have any sensory attention left to be attracted to people other than me while we're out. I bought an identical copy of my partner's planner, and I traced over their original writing so that my version of the planner would be identical. Only I changed the time of one thing. Now, when they miss the meeting because they wrote the wrong thing, they'll feel stupid and question the validity of their entire perception. This allows me to seem like the smarter one and get them to do whatever I want. I know this is wrong, but I don't care. Every morning, I secretly dunk my partner's toothbrush in the toilet. Now, I know this sounds gross, but that's the point. The knowledge that I did this becomes a shield of armor that protects me from being hurt or annoyed by anything my partner does. Because no matter what, I just remind myself, I dunked your toothbrush in the toilet. I win, and my relationship becomes free of toxic resentment. Here's how I get my partner to do all the housework. Every time I come home, I carry a grocery bag with me. The bag itself is just filled with rocks. Whenever I leave, I carry the rocks back out in a garbage bag. I know what you're thinking. Don't they ask what's in the bag? No, because I always say something emotionally charged to distract them. Today was the worst day of my entire life. I'm gonna go cheat on you. This way, they only register the bag subconsciously. Over time, they begin to subconsciously perceive me as helpful. This perception makes them feel guilty about how much they help and they do all the actual work. Here's how I get my partner to love me more. They're always drinking this stupid raspberry lemonade crap. Don't ask. Point is, I bought a duplicate one and filled it with an entire carton of pre-workout powder. On the days where I have to work and they'll be home alone, I switch the normal bottle with the pre-workout one so that when they drink it throughout the day, it causes them to have a panic attack. On the days when we're both home, I put back the normal one, causing my partner to think that the actual cause of their panic attacks is that I'm not there. My partner constantly loses everything and every single time we wanna go anywhere, I gotta wait 15 minutes for them to find something they lost. How does this happen with you every single time? What they don't know is, I'm the one taking this stuff and putting it in a slightly different place than where they left it. Did you check in your pants pocket from yesterday? This makes them feel like I'm smarter than them. Okay, I got it, that's where it was. Which I am, because if they kept track of their stuff, they'd know I was doing that in the first place. Here's how to find out if somebody cares about you or not. Place an object somewhere you know the person will see it. Then tell them you lost it. Hey, I lost my phone charger, like the brick. So if you see it, can you let me know? Yeah, yeah. If they find it in the obvious location and remember to tell you, did you find my phone charger by any chance? Yeah, it was by the sink. You know they care about you. But if they don't, no, I haven't seen it. It's right here. What do I have to do to get you to care about me at all? <laughs>
Here's how I tricked my partner into thinking they have a sleepwalking problem and why. Several months ago, I brought home a box of their favorite cereal. After they went to bed, I opened it, emptied most of it in the dumpster, and left a mess. Then, the next morning- What happened to the cereal? Do you really not remember at all? I came outside at like 3 a.m. and you were just standing there eating the whole box. I was? You must have been sleepwalking. A few nights later, I staged another incident, this time ramping up the intensity. <gasps> My plant! Well, I think I know what happened. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I don't remember that at all. It's okay, you didn't do it on purpose. I waited another week, then escalated even more. Good morning. <laughs> what? What's wrong? You ripped up this picture of us and said you don't love me. <laughs> now, I've established a pattern where I can make my partner feel bad for things they didn't even do, causing them to pay more attention to me and treat me better out of guilt. And there's nothing wrong with doing this because overall, it improves our relationship. This is how I avoid fighting in my relationship. I started a separate Instagram account as an attractive woman my partner would be jealous of. I created this person by face swapping multiple pictures of the same stock photo model with my own face and filtering them excessively so they'd be untraceable. I also followed people from me and my partner's mutual social circle and tried to build organic social media relationships so it would seem like a person I was believably friends with. It was months of painstaking work. I also started interacting with my actual posts in somewhat flirtatious ways so that my partner would become suspicious of who they were. Then I wrote my phone password onto a piece of paper and rigged it so my partner would think they accidentally discovered it. Whenever I have a new grievance with my partner, I create a fake DM conversation around that problem and pretend to be so absorbed in my phone that I'm not paying attention to a movie while watching. Then I leave my phone unattended with them. The goal is that I create a honeypot for my partner wherein they are suspicious enough that they use their prior knowledge of my phone password to unlock my phone and snoop for the conversation, upon which they will discover the current grievance I have with them and correct their behavior. So that is how I avoid fighting in my relationship. How to use police interrogation techniques to get your partner to admit that they're cheating. In the US, the police use the read technique, which is designed to make suspects feel comfortable enough to admit their own guilt. Set the stage by saying, why don't we stay in tonight? We can order takeout. We'll just have a chill night at home. Then begin the interrogation with what's called the direct or positive confrontation. Tell them you have evidence that they cheated. Proceed by shifting the blame. You can shift it towards yourself and say, I know I haven't been a very good partner, so I understand why you would need more than I've been giving you. If they deny it, which they probably will, listen to their denials and use them to develop a theme. This theme is going to be what you use to justify or excuse what they did in a way that they'll be receptive. So if their denial is, I would never do that to you, I love you, the theme becomes the justification. I know you love me so much and I haven't been giving you that love in return. I drove you to get it from someone else. If their denial is, I would never do that to you, I'm not that kind of person, that's the reason they cheated. I know you'd never hurt me. You'd never hurt anybody. You didn't want to hurt this person either, and it just spiraled out of control. You should also be directing their attention away from the consequences of what they've done. Frame it like confessing would be good for them, even if it won't. Remember, above all else, your goal is to make them comfortable enough to confess. And if they're guilty, they will. Here's the test that told me my partner was cheating. I got a souvenir keychain with the name of the person I suspected my partner was cheating on me with. I planted it outside our apartment, along the path someone would have to take to get to the front door, but still somewhere any random person could have dropped it. If my partner came home, saw the keychain, and took it, it would mean that this Nick had been there, and my partner took it because they assumed it belonged to them. If my partner left it on the ground, it would mean that they thought it was some other random person's, and they weren't cheating. The next time I checked, it was gone, so I ended the relationship. Here's how I make sure my partner doesn't cheat on me. My partner thinks that I have a psycho ex who's stalking me. In reality, it's me pretending to stalk myself, so whenever I get suspicious, got any plans tonight? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go out tonight around eight. Oh, mm, okay. What time will you be back? By 10, probably. Cool. I have my stalker resurfaced. Oh! <laughs> what does it say? Well, at least we'll both be here. Oh, wait. Forget it. Oh, are you sure? Mm hmm. Good. Here's a test that will tell you how long a relationship will last. I cook my partner a romantic dinner but I make it taste bad on purpose. The way I do it is I just make normal spaghetti and then put some Diet Coke in it. It's enough to make it taste objectively bad, but not enough to be obvious. If they pretend it's good and try to finish it, the relationship is doomed. It's good. Because it means they're too afraid of confrontation to communicate with me. If they say it's bad, but they're mean. <coughs> oh. That's disgusting. That means they don't care about my feelings at all and I should dump them. But if they tell me the truth in a way that's mindful of my feelings, it's just, it's not my thing. Thank you so much for the effort. That's a relationship that could last forever. Here's my trick to having the perfect relationship. Once a week, I secretly steal another one of my partner's socks and throw it in the dumpster. Why don't I ever have any socks? 
when they're all almost gone, I buy them fresh new socks. You are so thoughtful, thank you. The knowledge that I'm inconveniencing them in a small way that they'll never know about and ultimately doesn't really matter helps me vent my day-to-day -day frustrations I have with them so we end up fighting less and having a healthier relationship overall. This is how I train my partner to love me more. See you next week. Whenever I go out of town, right before I leave, I secretly replace their coffee with decaf so that while I'm gone, they experience caffeine withdrawal. These symptoms are exactly how I want them to feel when I'm not there. When I return, I switch them back. They think the reason they felt horrible while I was gone was because they missed me. I'm not doing anything wrong because caffeine is bad for you anyway. Here's how I make sure my partner never breaks up with me. Every couple weeks, I go to the pet store and buy a dozen live crickets and I release them into our house. My partner hates bugs, so when they see one, they scream for me. It reminds them how much they need me. Crickets are a great option for this because they look like a lot of different bugs and they won't cause an actual infestation. And as a bonus, they make a really annoying noise at night, so it deprives them of sleep, making them more susceptible to other manipulation tactics. Here's how I train my partner not to cheat on me. First, I got a very distinct smelling essential oil. And I put the essential oil on my hand. Then I had a breakdown where I made up a sob story about how <laughs> traumatized I was from my ex cheating on me. Just please promise me you'll never do that to me. I promise. <laughs> Is that lavender? Now, whenever I leave the house, I smother the doorknob in that essential oil. See you in a couple days. So if they leave the house or open the door, the smell will remain on their hands and remind them of my breakdown triggering their guilt. Here's how I make sure my partner doesn't break up with me. I made a video of occasional knocking sounds under a black screen, and I airplay this onto our TV in the living room every night when we go to bed. When my partner says something about it, I pause the video and act like they're crazy. Hello? There's nothing out there. You're just being crazy. This makes the person feel isolated and alone in their suffering, while painting me as a rational savior so they're less likely to break up with me. This is how I make sure my partner doesn't take me for granted. They have this plant that they're always taking care of instead of paying attention to me. So I bought another one that I keep hidden in my dark closet, so it always looks like it's dying. When I feel like my partner isn't paying enough attention to me, I secretly switch the two <gasps> plants. Then I make a suggestion for how to fix it. Try watering it with tap water. No, that's not gonna work. Once they do my suggestion, I I switched them back. So it seems like my idea miraculously oh. saved their favorite plant. What would I do without you? <laughs> I don't know. This is how I keep the upper hand in my relationship. I text my partner pictures of exact items I need from the store, but I Photoshop the picture so the color of the label is different and doesn't actually exist. I told you I needed the red one. Oh, I can use this, I guess. This way, they always feel like they're letting me down. This is how I tricked my girlfriend into proving she would cheat on me. For this, I needed to use her phone, which eventually I realized I could do while she was asleep by putting a picture of her face on a basketball. I went in and changed all of her ex-boyfriend's contact names to be fake numbers in my phone so that if she texted them, it would go to me. Next, I had to find out which ex she was on the best terms with. So I looked up movies with characters that had her ex-boyfriend's names and I watched them with her until I found which ex's name prompted her to text them. Then I pretended to be this ex and I tentatively floated the idea Idea of meeting at a specific time and place. Then I went into her phone again and changed the contacts back to the originals. This way she would unknowingly confirm the original meeting I had set up with the actual ex. Because I knew where the meeting was, I went there and caught her with him and I dumped her. Here's how to make your partner love you more. Start getting them flowers every week. Do this three weeks in a row so it starts to get a little annoying because they have to find a place to put all of them. On the fourth week, buy the flowers, but don't give them to your partner. Instead, let them discover you've thrown them in the garbage. This will make them think about all the things that they might have done wrong and work to be better for you. They also won't confront you about it because they feel bad they didn't want them to begin with. This is how I make my partner think I'm always right. There's this picture hanging in our living room. One day while they were at work, I replaced the frame it was in. Next, I did the same thing with the orange juice. Then I did the same thing with their toothpaste. The goal isn't that they don't notice these things. It's that they do notice, but they're so subtle. The only logical explanations are they're wrong that it was ever different to begin with, or I'm meticulously changing household objects to be slightly different, which is such a crazy thing for somebody to ever do that it seems far less likely. This makes them doubt their entire perception about everything. Why do you keep talking to your ex if you know that it bothers me? It shouldn't bother you. They can't even remember their own toothpaste. Here's how I make anyone I'm dating fall in love with me. First, I find a picture of some random old people. Then I take a picture from my date's social media and a picture of me make us both old and Photoshop us into the picture. And these are my grandparents. This is the kind of love I want. <laughs>
This subconsciously makes us in the future their model of an ideal relationship. This is how I make sure my exes never get over me. At the beginning of every relationship, I buy a big pack of birthday candles. Every time we share a happy moment together, I secretly blow one out. It smells like birthday candles. Blowing out birthday candles is a distinct smell that everyone recognizes by conditioning them to associate this smell with our relationship. Every birthday they celebrate in the future, when they blow out the candles, they'll think about me. Here's how I win every argument with my partner. If you send a text to your own phone number on an iPhone, you'll also receive the same text back. I use this feature to keep an exact replica of my text thread with my partner. I copy and paste every text message we send to each other. But every once in a while, I send a random affectionate message to the replica that I didn't actually send to the real person. You're the one who never answers my nice text messages. Whenever they get mad at me, I pull up the replica and I show them all the times it looks like I texted them something nice and they completely ghosted me. To them, it looks like they just didn't get the messages. They drop whatever they're upset about because I made them feel like they're the ones messing up our relationship. Number one reason relationships fail isn't fighting. It's building resentment towards the other person because you're trying to avoid fighting. To prevent this, you can do what's called a controlled burn. A controlled burn is a planned forest fire that helps prevent other more dangerous forest fires. Here's an example. I bought a pair of earrings from CVS. Then I took one of the earrings into the section at Home Depot where they have the fake kitchens. And I took a picture of it on the counter. I sent this picture to myself pretending to be my mom, asking if I'd seen the other one. When I got home, I tossed the other earring in the bathroom somewhere my girlfriend would discover it. When she did find it, she was furious. This is when I pulled up the old text thread from my mom. My girlfriend was so relieved and we had a good laugh about it. This catharsis allowed her to release all of the pent up emotions she had towards me. I recommend couples do this so it doesn't come out in a less healthy way. This is how to track how much your partner loves you. This is a daily partner rating sheet. It has all five love languages. So for example, words of affirmation every time they say, I love you or you're pretty, put a tally. Acts of service are things that they do for you that you otherwise would have had to do yourself. So taking out the trash, paying for dinner. Gifts are things they get you that you didn't need. So flowers would be a gift. Quality time, just put a tally for every hour. At the end of the day, total your tallies and add that number to the weekly rating sheet. Now it starts to get interesting. I must've done something wrong on Wednesday. Now we add the total of that to the monthly rating sheet. This was a pretty good month. It's an overall upward trend. Now we add the total of that to the yearly rating sheet. Here's mine. I like to put mine into line graphs so you can see what the year really looked like. You can see it sort of fell off the cliff there at the end. That was when we broke up. A good relationship has to be a little bad. Have you ever dated someone who was nice all the time and that made you lose interest? That's because it didn't feel nice. It just felt like nothing because you weren't traveling any emotional distance that would give you a scale for how nice it actually was. This is a very small rock I found. Just kidding, it's big. But you wouldn't have known that without this quarter, which gives you perspective. Let's say I surprise my partner with flowers and this lifts their mood from normal to happy. That's fine. But if I send them a scary text that says, can we talk when you get home and then surprise them with flowers, it feels euphoric to them because they travel double the emotional distance. Try this out for yourself and see how much it improves your relationship. This is how I learned my girlfriend didn't care about me. Every time we talked on the phone, right before I hung up, I would play the sound of a woman giggling. Bye. <laughs> My original goal was to make her think that I was with someone and we were making fun of her so she would crave my approval more. But every time I did it, she never said anything. So then I just tried random Bye. sound effects to see if she would notice if anything was happening and still nothing. This proved she couldn't wait to get off the phone with me as soon as she could. So I dumped her. How to make your partner love you more. <laughs> Play scary sound effects to give your partner nightmares while they're in REM sleep. This typically occurs about two hours after they first fall asleep. Nightmares are our brain's way of dealing with the scary emotions we've suppressed that we're too afraid to deal with during our waking life. Essentially, you're giving your partner free therapy. As they deal with their demons, they'll become more emotionally available to love you. Everybody's demons are a little different, so experiment with different sounds over time until you find what resonates with their unconscious mind. Here's how I found out my girlfriend didn't love me. There was a tiny picture of the two of us hanging on the fridge. So I took it in Photoshop and every week replaced it with a version where she was less and less visible until eventually it was just a picture of me. She never noticed. This proved that subconsciously she didn't care that she was slowly losing me and I dumped her. Here's how I trained my partner to never cheat on me. First, I recorded the sound of me coming home and unlocking the door to our apartment. Then I said I accidentally broke the TV and it didn't work. When actually the TV was playing a video I had made of a picture of a broken TV screen with the sound of me unlocking the door occurring at random time. This way, while I was at work, it would sound like I was unexpectedly coming home. 
my partner was conditioned to always feel like I could show up at any time. How to tell if your partner falls out of love with you. You've probably seen pictures of people before and after being called beautiful. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Start secretly taking pictures of your partner's reaction when you tell them you love them. Over time, you'll be able to see if the light dies from behind their eyes, indicating the true love is gone. How to make your partner jealous. Smile at your phone while playing text notification sounds. Create a contact for your own phone number and name it an innocuous family member. Then send yourself a cute picture. Show them the message. Look at this. This will make them feel like they're just being crazy and they'll treat you better. How to plant ideas in your partner's head. Insist you can't fall asleep without a fan. Play a recording of yourself whispering throughout the night. The high frequency of a whisper blends in seamlessly and seeps into their subconscious. Olive Garden, we will go to Olive Garden. Get your partner to agree to anything using two strongly scented candles. Light the first candle most of the time. How was your day? But every once in a while, light the second candle and start a fight. You've never loved me. After some time of doing this, light the fighting candle, but don't start one. How was your day? If they smell the fighting candle, but you're not fighting, they'll agree to pretty much anything you say because their body is telling them you're about to get mad at them. What do you think about going to Olive Garden? Does your partner actually love you? Hide a fake journal somewhere they will find it that starts out normal. Slowly throughout the journal, chronicle your descent into insanity. Continue to act normal in regular life. See what they do. Has your partner fallen out of love with you? Surprise them by telling them you used all of your savings to book an expensive vacation for the two of you six months from now. Tell them you only have 24 hours to get a refund. If the 24 hours passes and they don't say anything, that means they expect to be dating you for at least another six months. Now tell them you had to delay the vacation so it's in a year, but you have another 24 hours to get a refund. A person who's in love with you wants to be with you in theory forever, but a person who doesn't love you is just seeing how long they can hack it and won't want to commit themselves to a specific amount of time. If you suspect your partner's cheating, whenever they don't have their phone on them, play the message notification sound for every app until you find the one that makes them react unusually and come get their phone away from you. Create a new Instagram account and send your actual account unstable, hateful messages pretending to be someone your partner's cheating on you with. Your goal is to break up the relationship between your partner and whoever they're cheating on you with by making your partner think that person is crazy. Call your partner and pretend to be at a coffee shop. Yeah, I'm coming home from the coffee shop, but I'll... Ugh, hang on one second. You seem like you have so much love to give others, even when they don't necessarily return it back to you. Mm. So noble. I'm on the phone. Sorry, she's so annoying. Oh my god. Um, Can you just give me one more second? Sorry. Can I help you? Here's my number. Here, I'll write it down for you. Oh, I'm taken, actually. <laughs> <laughs> If you think somebody's mad at you, hand them a cup that you've made sure will fall over as soon as they set it down. Oh, no! Make sure it spills all over a picture that you've previously told them is the only one you have of your dead grandmother. I think this picture is like the only thing I have of her. Let's have some cold brew. They'll feel so bad and embarrassed about this that being mad at you will seem selfish to them and they'll drop it completely. Find out if your partner's actually over their ex. Take a recent picture from their ex's Instagram, Photoshop their ex out of it, and frame it in your house. To everyone else, it'll just look like a normal, stupid picture nobody cares about. But if your partner seems to notice it as odd, it means that they've been checking their Instagram and they subconsciously remember the background of every picture because they're in love with them. If you suspect your partner is cheating on you, you can use the app Google Voice to create a fake burner phone number. Using this fake number, send a frantic text message to your partner, identifying yourself only by a pet name, explaining that someone has broken into your house and you managed to wrestle their phone from them and lock yourself in the bathroom. If they show up at your house, you know they aren't cheating on you. If someone wants to break up with you, they're usually putting it off as long as possible until their emotions become too unbearable to ignore. Download a tone generator app and set it to a frequency that's physically unbearable if your partner doesn't love you, they'll think they just finally can't stand you so much that they'll end the relationship. Your partner will never believe you if you tell them you aren't cheating on them. Text your own phone number a fake conversation where you deny that you're cheating and change the contact name to your best friend. Next time you're with them, go to the bathroom and leave your phone open to the conversation. They won't be able to resist the temptation to look and think they discovered absolute proof that they can trust you.